Hey folks, Engineer775 here out in my shop. Uh, weekends are kind of spent trying to prepare for jobs coming. We got a lot of them, thankful for it. Got one here with Gain Solar doing a battery backup system with a GT500 grid tie uh, microinverters. And this is the first time we'll be using those. So I know Johnny's pretty excited about it. I am as well. Got jobs in South Carolina, Mississippi, North Carolina. Georgia <laughs> just jobs all over the place a um, bunch of simple pumps come in I've got four four or five simple pumps to install we got a little farm a lady growing lavender and raising goats and we're gonna create a water system for that we've got a solar EMP hardened solar generator going in here's the panels a lot of the hardware is outside sitting on a Schleder ground mount I'm gonna be making a battery box this morning Getting all my tools out. I'm gonna be using old Faithful, my Lincoln 300 300 Ideal Arc. And just gonna be doing a little stick welding here. Got a couple of my son and uh, his buddy coming over. I was gonna give him a welding lesson. So just getting the stuff out. Old school stuff I've had for 20, 20 years to do little simple welding tasks. We got a bunch of angle iron 316 mild steel. And I always use a 6011 rod to, to weld those. Uh, it's very forgiving. I got a bunch of different sizes. This is eight. This is pretty small, uh, a small battery stand. I'm gonna be putting these Roll Surrettes AGM batteries in these for S6460 AGM. I wonder why this thing is tore up. My cows got out and ate up this cardboard. Some of the basic tools, I always like having metal rulers and metal protractors good old c clamps can't beat the the swivel pad i call them welding clamps vice grips welding rods old wire brush hammer for chipping off slag stick welding We've got a uh, you know your soapstone markers square and uh of course welding helmet i have had the old school i bought one of these uh automatics and uh, it'll spoil you and uh, that's it. So it's time to cut some metal and burn some rod and teach some kids about simple stick welding and uh, the importance of prepping your material to keep the contamination to a minimum and then kind of how to how to lay down some welds. My TIG is down. I got to get that fixed. This I love this thing. Done a lot of TIG welding, a lot of stainless and aluminum and uh, but now we're in we're in stick only so we're down for the count but having a good stick welder around the farm is is a must so I walked in on the fighting side of me welding up a frame for a battery okay I'm just using my saw to cut up the pieces for my frame to hold the roll serrette batteries and so we've got our pieces cut. I just mitered the joints. And I got a, just a DeWalt grinder just to deburr. So I got my pieces. And we're going to weld this up. Now one of the simple things people don't learn until after they uh, do a bunch of this type of welding is that they tend to, they want to stitch up a complete weld in one side and then work their way around. But you don't want to do that. You want to do a bunch of tacking. So you want to tack the corners. A weld is extremely strong and will pull your this frame completely out of whack if you just welded this all up and you left everything else unsecure you'd have a you'd have a very crooked frame so you want to keep a square handy and um, so simple things I always like to set the welder up first and do a little test and make sure I got my my amperage correct get my settings correct and that's what this fine tune. I got a course adjustment on the welder from minimum to low to medium to high to maximum. And right now I'm on medium with my current dial a little bit low, so I have room to go up. I might be running a little bit hot, but I got lots of wiggle room, wiggle room with this. So anyway, just getting set up here to weld. You know, obviously it takes a, a circuit to make the, the weld, and I've got my 
my ground on here. And I just had some scrap pieces that I was just doing a little test to make sure my heat was good. I'm using the 6011 rod. And uh, I'm just going to go around and tack up this frame. And uh, we'll be back. And then I'm going to basically make two of these. And then we'll uh, put the legs. This is a real simple welding exercise. Um, but I kind of like this versus making a, this battery box out of wood because the batteries are AGMs. We don't need a, a, an enclosed battery box for this application. So, you know, I'm going to have about $60 in steel to make this. Yeah, a few hours out in the shop. It's a beautiful day. Just listening to music. I got a couple kids coming over, Elijah and his buddy. I'm going to show them how to weld some scraps together. They'll be bored to death in about 20 minutes, but at least they'll know that they can uh, stick some metal together if they ever had to do it. And uh, so that's it. So these are the simple tools, grinders, clamps, squares, welding rods, welding mask, and measuring devices, and a chop saw of some sort. I know a lot of people have gone to the chop saw with the, the toothed carbide tips and diamond tips, and that's fine. I need to get one myself. I've just run these carborundum blades for, oh gosh, I'm, I'm getting old, 30, 30 plus years. So they're cheap, they work, and anyway. All right, let's get to, let's get to tacking. Okay, we've got our frame, as square as I can get it. And then I try to weld from the bottom away from the battery side, which is on the other side. And so I can really put the heat to it and get good penetration. I can take this slide out of here. Anyway, I'll brush those up and um, get those corners. And then I can, once I did the, I put the, put the heat to it, and then I can back off and kind of come in here and cosmetically fill the corners if I lower the amperage. Not too worried about, I don't want to do a lot of weld on the inside because it's hard to grind. But, you know, I'm more after strength than beauty on this if i had a if i had my tig it would be beautiful but i've been grinding the welds on this battery frame here so you see i'm just plugged directly into the homeless so no problem starting out so once the frame is tacked together it makes it a lot easier to just go around and stitch it up so that's what we're gonna do um i've already set batteries in it to see if it's going to work. It's a little bit oversized, but I'm actually going to put some plywood. I've changed my mind. I'm going to put some plywood in the bottom. I got some three-quarter heavy duty. We'll paint everything up.
Okay, the simple battery frame or enclosure is welded up sufficiently. I'm going to go ahead and put some heavy duty plywood shelves in there. I was a little oversized. I could have done it without plywood, but until I opened up the batteries, I found that they were. <laughs> the you can't go by the dimensions that are on the spec sheet. So the bottom of the batteries were quite a bit, almost an inch like a taper or ten and a half inches ten and three quarters so anyway we're gonna make it work because I'm not gonna tear it apart and rebuild it. it's fine so anyway this is about as simple and cheap as I could make a battery enclosure just inch and a half three sixteenths thick angle so I think we'll be good it's a little bit wide for these rolls but it'll it's fine give uh, four inches of space to work uh, between for the interconnect cables I think we'll be all right Let's get her painted. Nice black and red enclosure. We'll paint the boards too, I think.